but it's starting to hurt. Rugby League. Oh wait, this thing's on. So, hello, my name is Michael Skiripa, and today I've chosen legendary sports commentator Ray Warren for my podcast. I've selected Ray as he's a massive part of my life, being an avid, avid rugby league fan. The choice is obvious, so why not further delve into Ray Rabbits Warren and see how he worked his way up the ranks. The voice, which is right here, that's Ray, is written by Ray himself, alongside with commentary from Chief Sports Writer at the Sydney Morning Herald, Andrew Webster. It was published by Nero in Collingwood, Victoria in 2014. According to the book Sports Manager in Australia, which is the textbook of the unit, sports delivery or systems involves a range of organisations and agencies that deliver sports for all. These include sports organisations, advocacy groups, health and education agencies and media sponsors. These are important as they emphasise pathways in sports development and equity in sport. Sports delivery systems offer per sporting personnel an opportunity to excel as well as opportunity to participate. I'll be analysing sports delivery systems into more detail and how it helped Ray progress as well as his highest moments in sports and the competitions he took, he took part in. So we'll go into a little bit of a background into Ray's life. Warren initially joined the police force. However, while still working at the police force, Warren was so passionate about sports, especially rugby league and trotting, that he that he went door knocking at various radio stations as a teenager, which eventually led to a phone call from uh, two LF and Young, where he eventually got a job as a sales representative, trotting commentator, and rugby league commentator. Warren's TV commentator. TV commentary career started through the Emco Cup, a midweek rugby league knockout competition, which I'll further discuss later. Rabs did this on Channel 10 with Keith Barnes in 1974. Keith Barnes is also a legendary uh, sporting commentator in Australia. In this time, Warren eventually became chief rugby league commentator on the 10 network in 1983. He also called three Melbourne Cups for the network, um, as he had a massive passion, and I mean massive passion for horses as well. He looked at the form guide ever since he was from a young age, ever since he was eight years old. So horses was a massive part of his life and he was, felt very passionate about it. Uh, he was supposed to travel to Los Angeles in 1984 to spearhead the Channel 10 commentary for the Olympics, but he's afraid of hot flying and refused to go. However, he eventually got over this fear of flying in the 90s, and he, which al allowed him to, to fly f further. In 1988, he was recruited by the Nine Network to commentate on the 1988 Rugby League World Cup, World Cup final and the 1989 State of Origin Series. He also, in that year, did the 1989 trans Tasman Test Series, which is a series uh, Australia versus New Zealand and it and involved England. And, and, in 1990, and in 1990, he was uh, broadcasting swimming at the 1990 Commonwealth Games. The television rights for the Rugby League were bought by nine in for the 1991 State of Origin series, the 1992 season, and onwards, he's been calling the game ever since for Channel 9. So, he's been calling the game on Channel 9 for 25 years, which is massive. Ray can thank sports delivery systems to help him reach the very top. Ray now has a bronze statue in his hometown of Juni, which proves how influential he is. Ray was involved in the MCO Cup and Rugby League World Cup. The MCO Cup was a straight knockout for format competition where the winner goes on until the ultimate champion was crowned. Ray still commentating, Ray is still commentating the Rugby League World Cup. According to whatis.com, a round robin is an arrangement of choosing all elements in a group equally in some rational order, usually from the top to the bottom of a list and then starting at the top of the list and so on. A simple way to think of round robin is that it's taking turns. That is exactly what the Rugby League World Cup is. It's a group stage format and the two top, and the top two, in some cases top one, go through and find their way to the final. So the top two usually go on to play in the in the quarterfinals, which is um, eight teams. And uh, the the four winners from that meet in the semifinals, and the two winners from the semifinals will meet in the final, and the winner of the final eventually holds up the holds up the trophy and the World Cup and the World Cup title. Ray has a plethora, and I mean a plethora of sporting sporting achievements. I've I've limited down to the top ten in no particular order as you can't really uh, 
list them, like order them, because there's just too many to order. So in no particular order, I I went with number one, 1973 securing a contract with Channel 10, as it was his first gig on TV and an iconic moment in his life. Number two, calling three Melbourne Cups as he read the form guide and called trots in uh, young New South Wales as his first job. And he's read the form guide ever since he was a young child. So calling three Melbourne Cups is a massive for him. Uh, Number three was getting his first gig on radio as a young young teenager in the police force. As this is what he really wanted to do. He he knew he was born to commentate. Number four was um, getting a bronze statue in his hometown of of Juni in 2011, which is an obvious one, as if you got a bronze statue in your hometown, you'd be pretty happy as well. <laughs> Five, being made Chief Rugby League Commentator for Channel 10. Uh, so that was uh, in, 19, in 1973, and well, no, it was actually 1983 where he made, was made Chief Com- Rugby League Commentator, calling a plethora of State of Origin games starting back in 1989. He's now called State of Origin ever since 1989, up until um, 2017, where many are predicting this will be his last State of Origin series as he's wildly predicted to retire, but he was predicted to retire at the end of 2016, which he didn't, so I think he's still got another year left in him. Uh, calling several, number seven was calling ru- several Rugby League World Cups, which is iconic for anyone, to call, rug- to call a Rugby League World Cup, to call a World Cup in anything is just absolutely iconic. Number eight is broadcasting the Commonwealth Games. As Ray is all wildly talented, he can basically commentate anything. And the Commonwealth Games is such a massive, massive uh, event in the sporting calendar. This occurs every four years. Um, number nine is being at Channel 9 ever since 1989. So a 25-year career is just absolutely... or no, more than 25 years, sorry. But, uh, yeah. Uh, number 10 being dubbed the voice of rugby league. Uh, so many actually regard Ray to be the voice of rugby league, and ever since watching rugby league as a young boy, I can all I can remember is Ray Warren's voice. So now we're going to a personal reflection on this book. Ray can thank sports delivery systems immensely for his rise to the top. Ray started from the bottom at a local radio station, and now he's the chief commentator at Channel Nine. He's the voice of rugby league and the most respected rugby league commentator ever. Colleague. Channel 9 commentator and general manager, manager of the Penrith Panthers, Gus Gould, claims Ray Warren to be a legend in Australian sport. Overall, the book was a, was a pleasure to read. It was interesting to get an insight on how influential sports delivery systems are and how much it helps to reach the top. Ray Warren is my inspiration, and I believe me choosing Ray Warren was the appropriate choice. Thank you for listening, and keep listening to Channel 9.